before we get into it. So, Alexander, what's going on in the news right now? What are some stories that are that are trending? I know you were talking about uh, sending messages about Moscow and what's going on there. They passed a thousand cases. No? Absolutely, they passed a thousand cases, and it's quite clear that they've been quietly ramping up reparations for a while. So, we had the announcement last week by Putin that there was going to be a one week public holiday for the whole country. But now Moscow is going to be in a total lockdown. It's going to be like Wuhan and China. <laughs> they're, they're putting very tough restrictions on people's movements. You can't leave your home except to buy essential goods. You have to get a special permit. We're going to be going to have to get a special permit in order if you if you need to go working. And the thing that I found most eye catching is that even if you've got a dog, you're only allowed to exercise it within 100 meters of your place of uh, residence. And of course, the Russians have developed, Alex, and this is something you're probably uh, aware of, this incredibly sophisticated system of surveillance with face recognition software, which they've planted cameras all over Moscow. I mean, it sounds again to me Orwellian, actually. But anyway, they've been doing that so they can keep track on what people are doing. And I saw a really interesting article in CN on CNN of all places about the kind of technologies that they're using and the way they can keep track on people and keep watch watch on people in Russia. And of course, going back to what we were talking about just recently in another video, uh, this is going to stay. I mean, we're going to have all these things. I mean, it's not going to be rammed away. So. Is that like CCTV in, in London? Yeah, or? Oh, it's much, much more advanced than the kind of CCTVs we get here, I think. I think this is actually, we're talking about, you know, full rate face recognition software enables them to keep track of people to a degree that is just not possible anywhere in London. I mean, they're, they're miles ahead of this. They're going the way that China has, except, of course, they're adding their own particular uh, 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 twists very to this. Bad. So that's very, very bad. bad. Absolutely. Very, very, Everyone's very bad. Everyone's going the way of China. This Absolutely. is very bad. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the Russians have uh, definitely going that way. And of course, using the, 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 the crisis, which I am not denying, can I stress again, this is a crisis. The, using the crisis is the perfect excuse to do it. And the crisis will be over, but all the all the cameras and all the machines will all be there. So there we go. Yeah, because they're on top of the crisis. I mean, they have, yeah. even though it passed a thousand cases, I'm seeing the ramp up. It's 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 not alarming the way it's ramping up oh, and no, it seems it's, like it's about to hit the top of the curve it seems like it's getting there now and I think compared so. to europe it's I really mean, low the, the number of confirmed cases that have done very, a lot of testing a lot of testing absolutely there are lots of testing they've they've also done something else which is different from what we see in other countries which is that they they basically put all these people who come to Russia or who are suspected of being potential cases, they've rounded them up, they're keeping observations on them, um, they're putting them in their homes. They've already been doing that. And it's mainly those people who are apparently uh, uh, now getting the infection. So it's unlikely that they really need to do this. But as I said, it's the perfect excuse to do it. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, we, we are always called a pro-Russian. We're, we're both pro-Russians, supposedly. This is very bad. And, you know, I don't like it at all. It's the rise of the surveillance state. This is one of the negatives of, of what's going to happen to the world absolutely, after this, uh, this corona is, you know, absolutely. goes away and is, and, and is conquered and we get back to our daily lives. Yeah. The surveillance state is going to be a lot more prevalent. This is going to be absolutely. one of the major negatives of what's been going on. Correct. Very scary stuff. Very scary very stuff scary. out of Moscow. Alexander, what else is going on? I think... Um, I'm well, trying to figure out what's what's going on with Iran and Venezuela. And, well, uh, I mean, Pompeo's pom, pom, running the pom, show now, and he's I had, I had this, everyone. I had this discussion with Tom Longo actually, and yesterday he made the point, which I think is entirely, absolutely right. That what's happening is that Donald Trump is now completely focused on domestic policy, and in, so the result is. Pompeo is now running U.S. foreign policy. And, of course, he's becoming exactly as you'd expect. He's becoming more aggressive. So we now see more sanctions on Iran. They're being ramped up. A whole tw I was reading, I think it was on oilprice.com, the 20 Iranian companies, some of them working in Iraq, have now been sanctioned. And of course, we've had Maduro classified as a narco terrorist, or, or which is, I mean, it, it, it's just 
I mean, it, it, it's it's nuts as far as I could see. I mean, it really is. The Russians, by the way, have done a, a funny thing with Venezuela, which is that the oil company, Rosneft, they've just sold their holdings to the Russian right. government. Well, I think so as to sidestep sanctions, because the US was looking to sanction Rosneft. So Rosneft sells its uh, assets, Russian state buys them, and they're now going to be operated by a Russian state company, whose identity we don't even know. But this is clearly, I'd say, uh, uh, being, being done uh, uh, to get around the sanctions issue. You know, it, 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 it's a dodge. But having said that, I mean, yeah, let's remember, I mean, we now we've got, we've got uh, Pompeo, if you like, and he's, he's on the rampage, it seems to me. He's, he's, he's cranking up sanctions against Iran. He's cranking up sanctions against Venezuela. And he's essentially in charge of foreign policy. And I don't think that's a good thing at all, Frank. So I, I would say that's another very, very big negative of what's happening now with the corona. Yeah. Is that yeah. you have guys like Pompeo who are pretty much just going unchecked. Yeah. Well, wonders how important any of this is, though. I mean, I have to say this. I mean, in a situation where the world is just imploding economically, I mean, it does it really make much sense well, to do these things? And will it make any real difference? I mean, you know, Venezuela's isolated, Iran is isolated already. Yeah. I mean, these more sanctions, it seems to me you're just throwing more uh, uh, more at something that's already, you know, full. Oh, yes, but, but you won't be able to roll those back. I you mean, won't be able no. That's the thing. That's the other yeah. thing. The other thing, the other thing that's happening is that apparently we are now almost at the point where um, oil storage facilities are full <laughs> around the world. So, you know, uh, MBS is apparently is, is being told repeatedly now by more and more people that you're going to ramp up oil. You're, all this oil production you're producing, you can't sell it because there isn't anyone there and no one has space to hold it anymore so uh, uh he he doesn't seem to grasp this apparently and the, there was even an extraordinary article on uh, uh oilprice.com which said that the, the oil price could fall below zero in other words mbs might actually have to pay people to buy his oil which just just i mean i i it's it's the beggar's belief but there, that's it seems the crazy world we're in now <laughs> Yeah, and all the crazies are running around now, unchecked. They're all running around unchecked. He had a perfect Everyone's chance. Everyone's so focused. Absolutely. He yeah. had a perfect chance to pull back with the G20. He had the, there was the G20 uh, summit meeting. There was apparently some talk that, you know, we would, we they would talk about uh, oil. And apparently he made sure the subject was kept off the agenda. <laughs> and now, of course, what he's going to discover is he's going to, he's going he's to be drowning in oil. And so Saudi Arabia, because let's say he's, pumping out oil at a sort of crazy rate, which is unbiased because there's already so much of the stuff all over the place. By the way, I, I also said I learned something from an oil engineer, which is that apparently the more oil you pump from a pipeline, not, it's not, it, it doesn't just deplete faster, it depletes much faster. If you pump out oil too fast, you actually damage the oil well. So uh, it, it's another thing he apparently hasn't taken into account. But but that's the way oil, oil. if you really want to deplete your resources, you just pump it out very, very fast. You What you need to do is to keep a sort of steady, steady progression. And that's the way that you can get the maximum return from an oil field. Mm -hmm. But, you know, none of this apparently is impressing MBS and supposedly whenever anybody tells him anything he throws a tantrum so there we are the crazy kingdom the, the crazy, crazy kingdom of saudi arabia Absolutely. final quick story very very quick and then we'll get to to a video alexander is that uh i read that erdogan now is pulling back all the migrants from evros from the border with greece well, so that whole thing was just <laughs> all one big charade and yeah. now erdogan is just pulling all those guys back now you switch the tap on, you have the migrant tap on, and you switch it off again. It didn't work, so he's bringing them back. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's crazy, and it shows exactly how uh, bogus that whole thing was. I, I'll say this for Mitsotakis in Greece. At least on that one, he showed, he showed real um, effectiveness. Yeah, it also shows what a, what a charade, what a farce the whole thing yeah. was. Yeah. Lastly, uh, uh, I gather that the Italian Prime Minister, Mr. Conte, has now actually said that, you know, if the European Union can't get its act together, then what's the point of it?
I mean, he's actually said that. So that's the Prime Minister of Italy. And he, well, you know, bear in mind, he's, he's um, you know, he's the Prime Minister who got rid of Salvini. So what act together are they going to get? I was just watching the news and I was watching Euro News and they had a 30 second commercial of von der Leyen washing her hands. Yeah. while singing the EU national anthem so that you could promote washing washing your hands, clean hands. I was like, this is this is absolutely just comical. It's a joke. I know. I know. I know. She's sitting there and washing her and then she does this and she's like, there you go. That's how you wash your hands. <laughs> wash in the front, wash between the fingers. Oh, this is Ursula van der Leyen. You know, the, the, the leader of Europe. <laughs> well, of course, washing one's hands is what Pontius Pilate did when he sent Christ off to be to his execution. It's a sort of way of uh, abdicating responsibility in a way also. There you go. That's, that's there right. you go. Good way to tie it up. Let's get to yeah. our video. Let's get to our video. Yeah.